how can you use timelines? Now have I laid out these boxes one to six, I could say to the client, of these different areas, where do you think we should begin? Okay. So I am not going to be what I call a surrogate frontal lobe. I am going to engage the client in this process. So note that this is not only something that is in my head or in the team, but Ken, if you scroll down to the next screen, one of the things you will find in your handout, page nine, is in fact this social discourse. So I know this is small print, but let me walk you through this. So this is something that I use in giving feedback to the client or significant others. Oh, well done. I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. Okay, so let me see if I understand, Don. What brings you here is, oh, look at that. I'm now starting off with box two. And you came of your own volition, 1B. And the impact of this on a day-to-day -day basis is 2B. And in addition, and every time you hear me say in addition, you now know I'm working box three. You're also struggling with, and the impact of that on a day-to-day -day basis is, and your present situation seems to be maintained and made worse by, nicely done, Don, go for box four. At that time, I now say back to the client, the variety of different stresses. I get their acknowledgement, embellishment, and confirmation and validation that that's what their life is like in terms of the immediate kinds of daily hassles they have, in terms of where they're living that puts them at high risk of re-victimization. That helps me understand as I walk in their shoes. And moreover, what is the history of victimization that they could tell at their own pace? And moreover, what is it they, and for this you receive what kinds of treatments done? Oh, look at that, he's going for box five. Go for it, fella. And of those, what work was, and, and, and you seem to be particularly satisfied with, but had difficulty following through with, and in spite of, and every time, if you watch me do interviews, you will see that this is the social discourse I use. So in spite of, you were able to accomplish what? So out of the survivorship of being a victim of human trafficking, you did what? Of being someone who is gay and, and, and had sexual orientation, bullying, you were able to do what? In spite of the long history of, and, and the people you can count on are, and some of the services we have that you could take advantage of are, let me see, Don. Have I have I picked up on it? Am I in tune with? Uh, my favorite character is uh, the Peter Falk character of Columbo. Okay, and in, in fact, you'll see when we get to the art of questioning that I tend to use a lot of befuddlement and amusement that uh, Peter Falk used. In fact, one of my goals here is to help clinicians play dumb. For some of you, this will not be a difficult or challenging role. The key question is, how do you play dumb without giving up your placebo value? So I now, if we go back to the original boxes, Ken, I can engage the client in some kind of discussion of how would we know if we're making progress in terms of how we spend our time. And I'm not going to relinquish my expertise in this particular domain, but I want the client to be able to understand from the outset where all of the treatments that we are going to engage in follow from their storyline. 